It is Thursday, December 17th, 2020, and you are tuned into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. Today is apparently driver announcement day. We've got details on what's upcoming for Tyler Courtney, Chase Younghands, Parker Price Miller, and Cade Dillard. But first, this episode is brought to you by Blood Lubricants. Have you checked out Blood yet? If you're riding in your car or at work today listening to me and thinking, I'm not a dirt racer, why do I care about racing oil? Let me stop you. Besides their high-quality synthetic racing oils, Blood has all kinds of other products. Yes, racers should check them out because you can basically have all of your needs covered in one stop. And as we've talked about, they've had a bunch of race wins in 2020. It's, it's hard to argue with that race winning uh, performance. But non-racers will find all sorts of great products as well. If you need oil for your side-by-side, -side, Blood has it. If you need high-quality ATF for your car or truck, Blood has it. Um, if you need penetrating lube or some cleaning products for your garage, definitely check out Blood. If you'd like to see the full line of Blood products, visit bloodlubricants.com. That's B-L-U-D lubricants.com. You can also click the banners at the top of the pages at dirttracker.com. When you're ready to buy, Blood is offering Dirt Tracker listeners a nice little discount to get 25% off most products. Use code DIRT at checkout. That's D-I-R-T, all caps, at checkout. As dirt racing season kind of begin, you know, began to wind down here in, in, in recent weeks, recent months, I was worried that we wouldn't have enough to talk about on a daily basis to even keep doing this show, um, you know, at least doing it Monday through Friday. But so far, I've been pretty much wrong on that front. It seems like we've had news items nearly every day, kind of between schedule announcements, drivers changing teams, track news, you know, all kinds of things have been happening. So, you know, and that certainly continued yesterday. We had a bunch of driver announcements and some guys committing full time to some series. Uh, so let's run through all of those things that are going on. In a move many expected, especially with his 2020 schedule and comments he's kind of made through the media, Clausen Marshall Racing announced that Tyler Courtney will join the All-Stars full-time in 2021 to chase that championship. Besides the full USAC National Midget schedule and a sizable non-wing schedule, Courtney and Clausen Marshall did a bunch of wing sprint car racing in 2020, including 14 outlaw starts and 14 All-Star starts. The limited schedule was in preparation to go full-time in 2021, with Courtney ultimately hoping, uh, hoping to join the Outlaws full-time in the future. Courtney has been with Klaus and Marshall since the team was formed late in 2016 and has amassed 50 wins for the organization. Through his 2020 wing schedule, Courtney showed improvement in a 20, ending the year with a top five and three top tens with the All-Stars and a top five and three top tens with the Outlaws. His best Outlaw finish was fifth at Plymouth in September and his best All-Star finish was fifth at Port Royal in September. One of his most impressive weekends, I think, uh, was at the Governor's Reign at Eldora with the All-Stars. He made the feature both nights against you know, what was effectively the top 50 sprint cars in the country, and then on the final night drove up from 24th to finish 14th in the feature. I think being able to focus solely on wing racing should pay dividends for Courtney, and I expect him to be a contender early on next year. He becomes the seventh driver to declare with the All-Stars, joining Corey Eliason, Justin Peck, Zeb Wise, Ian Madsen, Hunter Schoenberg, and TJ Michael. Still think we might see a few more guys join up with the All-Stars, especially with the Water Outlaws Traveling Group being so stout for next year. And remember, the Florida part of the schedule for the All-Stars isn't for points, so guys have effectively until April to really make that decision. So we'll keep you posted on there as we hear more. One of the drivers I thought might make a run at the All-Star title next year was Parker Price Miller, but it sounds like he actually might be staying out with the Outlaws next season. On last week's episode of the Loud Pedal podcast with Tyler Burnett and Dylan Welch over at Flow Racing, PPM said they are getting cars and parts together to run with the Outlaws full-time on his own deal. We've even seen them create a Twitter account at PPM underscore racing, uh, which indicates they will run the number 19. Between Dietz Motorsports and Bernie's Indy Race Parts team, PPM ended up running all 54 outlaw races in 2020, finishing the season with a win, five top fives, and 23 top tens. That was good enough for ninth in points. Uh, but as he told Tyler and Dylan, he didn't get a points check at the end of the season because he ran a 360 race in Texas and wasn't eligible for full-time series membership. There was not, there's not yet been an official announcement from the Outlaws um, kind of on the inclusion on PPM joining the series full time. But if he does go on the road, as he said, he's joining a tough field of drivers that's adding Aaron Reitzel and Brock Zierfoss full time as well. So, like I said, going to be tough out there with the Outlaws next year. Speaking of the Outlaws, not the Sprint Cars, the Late Models, we talked Tuesday on the show about the packed Late Model schedule in Florida between Lucas, Dirt Car, and the Outlaws, and I wondered kind of aloud about how many guys we might see run that full slate of 19 races. Yesterday, Chase Young and tweeted out his 2021 Speed Week schedule, and sure enough, all 19 races are listed. So I'd imagine if Young Hands is planning on all the races, you'll probably see several more attempt all of the nights as well. Young Hands also posted a link to the rest of his 2021 schedule, and it indicates a return to the World of Outlaws later. 
late model series full time again. He finished fifth in the point standings with the Outlaws in 2020 on the strength of six top fives and 26 top tens in 40 starts. He had a best finish of third, which he did twice at Plymouth Dirt Track in July and Livonia Speedway in September. Youngins has been a regular driver with the Outlaws for most of the last six or seven seasons. And officially joining Young Hands and the Outlaws again for his third attempt at the full schedule will be Cade Dillard. Dillard is a driver we talked about several times through the season because of his incredible improvement from his rookie season to his sophomore season. He finished 2023rd in the Outlaw points behind Brandon Shepard and Ricky Weiss, but at various times through the year was within striking distance of Weiss for that second spot. Dillard ended the season with 13 top fives and 24 top tens in 40 starts and grabbed his first two series wins. His first being early in the season, that $15,000 score at Votto Speedway in January, followed by a win at the Firecracker at Lernerville in July, which paid $30,000. Uh, not, not bad to end the season with uh, one of those crown jewels. Along with Weiss, Dillard will be a strong challenger for Shepard and the Rocket team for the title in 2021. He showed he can win races, and he had flashes of that consistency needed to take down the title. I think I saw at one point he finished top 10 in 15 of 18 straight races, something like that. Uh, and that's the type of consistency you're going to need. With you know, Shepard runs top five, top 10 almost every single night, um, and if you don't have that consistency, you're just not going to have a chance to beat him. So, uh, don't forget the Outlaw season starts in January again with the Sunshine Nationals at Volusia getting underway on January. 4th. 14th. So again, an early start for the World of Outlaws late model series. Before we close up shop today, I just want to say thanks and welcome to the new subscribers and listeners in recent days and weeks. Uh, glad to have you along for the ride. The growth, of the, the, the growth of the show really kind of continues to amaze me. Um, and, I, and I want you guys to know the subscribers, the social media followers, the emailers, all of those things uh, certainly don't go unnoticed. Um, I try to uh, reply and, and uh, you know, at least interact with as many of those posts and things as I can. But uh, certainly appreciate everybody that's joined on. Lots more fun stuff coming. I actually have uh, Dirt Tracker Conversations interview scheduled for Friday and Sunday. Uh, so two more of those are on the books and I've got a bunch more uh, stuff planned for the future as well. So stay tuned for that. Lots more content coming. And if you guys have suggestions, if you have questions, if there's, you know, people you want me to talk to on the podcast, any of those things, feel free to reach out social media channels, you know, the email address, all of that stuff is wide open and I'm uh, certainly open to all suggestions. So again, thanks everybody for uh, jumping in with me. That's it for the show today. You can find Dirt Tracker Daily on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or where you get podcasts. Please subscribe and leave a review. You can also watch the show every day on YouTube and Facebook. You can email the show at info at dirttracker.com and you can follow along at facebook.com slash dirttracker, twitter.com slash dirttracker and the website itself, dirttracker.com. Follow me personally on Twitter at Justin underscore Fiedler. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.